I work as a futurist is about foresights, it's not about predictions. Uh, you may not know that many futurists, but there, of course there's famous ones like Alvin Toffler or Paul Sappho or Ray Kurzweil. Uh, my work is more short-term fused. Usually this is why I'm not talking about 2040, but only about 2020, because my work just doesn't span that far. So uh, Foresight is what it's all about. If you want to follow me, I'm G. Leonhard on Twitter and uh, a green futurist for my green topics. And of course, my various websites I'll show you at the end, but you can easily find me on the web. Uh, check out gertube.com for my YouTube videos. So 2020, it's it's funny, you know, it's it's. It's hard to make a prediction. If you look at Thomas Watson, the chairman of IBM, who said, I think there's a world market for maybe five computers, you know, clearly he was wrong. So it's actually not that hard, uh, not that easy to predict. But 2020 is pretty close. I give him my best shot. First of all, I think what we're seeing right now, John Elkerton uh, wrote a great book called Zero Notes, and he says that the world of nine billion people by mid century will demand fundamental changes in our mindsets, behaviors cultures and paradigms and i think one of one big shifts in the uh, shift in that as part of that is the shift to a carbon neutral uh, energy world and also to a world of collaboration and, and hyper collaboration rather than hyper competition uh, i mean if you look on a global scale the nine billion people within the next 10 years say you know that is going to force us to radically change how we consume what we eat how we drive, how we fly, and this is going to be some substantial changes uh, in all the way across the board, not just driven by, by technology, clearly, but also driven by the, the subsequent uh, habit changes. Uh, check out the book Zero Knots, and this is basically talking about how we have to go to zero for some of those things that, that we used to go to 100 for. Um, Ban Ki-moon, the UN Secretary General, already said several times that the global suicide pact that we have right now is, is, is based on the old model of development. And I, I conclude that basically business as usual is dead. Uh, and of course, this may be good news for Brazil because you can reinvent stuff. The other thing is I think that uh, David Corton from Yas Magazine quoted several times, you know, we're heading into a suicide economy, uh, a suicidal economy of which turns in circles until it explodes. And um, that needs to change. And uh, I have a term for this. I call this a move from ego to eco. Um, and if you take those two uh, things, you know, of course, that's that's the ego mind here, the industrial mind, the polluting mind, so to speak, and, and then the connected society on the right that, that we are moving into. This will not be entirely trivial, this change, because clearly there's a lot of money in what I call the egonomy based on large companies, large corporations, uh, which we will have in the future as well, but in a, in a collaborative way. I mean, clearly, this theme that I'm using for my next book, it's called From Ego to Eco. I didn't quite come up with this, but it, it's sort of a meme that's around the web for some time. And the subtitle is why business as usual is killing us. And I really believe that business as usual will kill us. And this is on the best possible way to killing us. Just look to the American elections for good examples on what business to usual does to people when it's about really, really the obvious stuff that needs to be done, that needs to be fixed, that people can't agree on. And of course, in Europe, we're not really faring much better there either. So I'd be looking to the developing, so-called developing countries, uh, you know, led by Brazil and, and uh, maybe India, Indonesia. Uh, and it's not later Africa to actually put this into place. I found this on Tumblr by, uh, I think this is from uh, some e-help place in the UK or something. Um, I have to find the source, but this actually has a really nice illustration of what I'm talking about here, going from the, uh, on the top down, the pyramid, uh, to the circular economy. Um, so thinking of us as, as, as being interconnected and actually passing benefits back and forth and also uh, make, making sure that we keep the commons as part of uh, our thinking so that not everything is, is going into private things but something also remains common. Here's a very large table of comparison. Some of the stuff I'm working on in my book is, is saying, okay, what is the difference between the ecosystem and the ecosystem? And clearly uh, it's sort of mirroring what's happening on the web, whether it's good or bad. You know, we have now a distributed content economy peer-to-peer uh, -peer uploading and sharing YouTube is peer-to-peer -peer. MTV is, is centralized we have owned and closed systems in the past that are now shared and open I mean just look at SlideShare look at Skype look at peer-to-peer -peer file sharing we have hyper collaboration we have a, a, a system of where we actually crowdsource stuff from the outside outside and we're seeing this trend going across the board across all industries this shift from ecosystem to ecosystem, from the monolithic to the networked. I mean, this is not just Google versus Microsoft, which is now trying to become network and interoperable and make nice tablets as well. So ecosystem to ecosystem, that's sort of a, a big theme here. Right? But the key question is, can we grow more? Can Brazil grow more 
because Brazil is growing like crazy, as all of you know, I'm sure, and quite proud of, grow more but with less environmental impact, I think that is going to be quite hard. This is a, is this a technologist wishful thinking that we can actually carbon sequestrate and, and then pollute more so we can take it back out. <coughs> well, the Unilever CEO, Paul Pullman, I think this is already a few years old, he said, in order to live within the natural limits of the planet, we will have to decouple growth from environmental impact. How do we do this? Could Brazil be the leader in this? I, I think, clearly, I think that it, leadership is going to come from, from developing markets, from emerging uh, economies, so-called. Uh, uh, a lot of people are talking about how we can make money by, by, by switching to green. I think that's largely true, but not entirely. I think sustainable business is the number one objective until 2020. That's quite clear. Making money in a green way, in an eco way, that, that is going to be a main theme and it's going to be absolutely humongous challenge for hotels, for airlines, for car companies, uh, for uh, technology companies. Um, you know, that is a prime objective, not just because it's good for, for the planet and will hopefully and possibly keep us from exploding in 2050, which isn't entirely clear, actually, but also because there's new business models unfolding that are interconnected. We're seeing this everywhere, and this could possibly be the, the key to uh, the Rio 20 debates in the next couple of years is to completely take this upside down. I don't know how exactly we can do this. I mean, the overlap of environmental and economic interests and social interests, as you can see here, you know, that's, that's a tough spot to get to. But it's inevitable. I think for us that is where we're going. Uh, some numbers on inequality, which is rising around the world, well, it's a rising in some countries and, and, and lowering in others. But in Brazil, for example, there, there has been a good movement there towards more of an equal spread. But still, there's a huge amount of uh, challenge, especially, of course, in, in America, right? as we can see here, you know, being more equal, more unequal. The, uh, the orange ones are unequal. So in the United States, Brazil actually not doing so bad. But U.S., China and Germany, surprisingly, in the and the Scandinavian countries. So, I mean, uh, that is an interesting angle here. I think inequality is absolutely a, a death wish as far as the uh, economy of the future is concerned. That has to be fixed. There's a, a particular approach to this in Bhutan, where they have uh, replaced GDP with GNH, or GNP, Gross National Product, with Gross National Happiness. They have even a commissioner of Gross National Happiness, which I think is more important than GNP, uh, if you look at this course, it's not just about economic growth, but you'll face negative consequences. So you have to look at this in a holistic way. I think this Bhutan kind of idea could be very well carried over into Brazil and other emerging countries. I think we're looking at possibly and probably the rebooting of capitalism as we know it. I mean, clearly that is going to be a huge challenge. And look at this, what's happening in Brazil with deforestation. Brazil and Indonesia are leading deforestation around the world uh, that is lost. And that needs to change, I think, it's urgently required, and this is a huge business opportunity, responsible capitalism and, and what uh, I think, not Jeremy Rifkin, but uh, Paul Hawkins calls the natural capitalism. Um, that is a shift, you know, from the turbo capitalism that we've learned from, from the U.S. economy. I think clearly uh, it's, the mission is now to go from this place down here to where everything was about industrial things, about production and about information and data lately, moving up to thinking of us as a network, as a biosphere, not just in the green sense, but also in the sense of business models, you know, being interdependent, having those business models develop. And this will happen clearly in all of these nice abbreviations, the BRICS, the Next 11, the MIST, the CIVETS, the CIVETS are Colombia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Egypt, Turkey, and South Africa. And clearly that's where it's going to happen. So you, you're quite in a, in a well, in a good place there. Africa being the window after, I think, Brazil, uh, probably in the next three to four years, Africa will become a huge window for this opportunity. And this is also very, very interesting in my view is to look what happens there. But it's all about interconnected business models. And, and interconnected means also replenishing it, you know, a circular economy. As Jumeir Haig uh, says in his book, The 21st Century Capitalist Manifesto, he's talking about value cycles or circles, not value chains. And I think this is really what we're looking at. Going from this idea from independence, you know, which was you know, Universal Music, Universal Studios, and Goldman Sachs, and big banks, and big companies, big government, to interdependence, which uh, Tiffany Schlein talks about in a new movie, Connect the Movie, which I highly recommend that you watch. Uh, going from ego to eco here is absolutely key for us uh, in order to survive in the future and actually create a biosphere of business 
and ideas and of course of culture. This is a very large cultural uh, ramification here. As you can see, I think every, poli every single politician is going to have to make the biosphere their central message. And not just in terms of technology or in terms of energy, but in terms of media and arts, society, business and, and politics. This is becoming the main thing. How do we do that and how do we shift in this direction? By 2020, it's going to be entirely clear. It can't be growth, but unprecedented collaboration, co-creation, innovation and interdependence. That's basically where we're heading in the next uh, decade. And convergence, of course, will have those massive opportunities, you know, between search and social, television and the internet. And, and, and clearly, I mean, that's going to be mind-boggling in the next five to eight years, as long as we keep in mind that we still want to remain human with all the technology that's going to start happening with what Ray Kurzweil calls a singularity, which is a lot of that is actually quite scary. Um, but probably inevitable. Uh, the business model that we're seeing these days, you know, the cloud and the crowd, that is, that is going to be huge by 2020, connecting media, education, uh, uh, money, mobile money, uh, not having cash anymore, very likely is going to happen. I mean, clearly between the crowd, the cloud and the crowd, there's going to be lots of really interesting business models. It's about media, it's moving from, from access to ownership, uh, from ownership to access. <laughs> They wish that to be the other way around. But, uh, you know, music, starting with music now, we're, we're just accessing it in the cloud using Spotify, RDO, and Napster, or whatever. Uh, if Napster is still around, I think that's Rhapsody now. But um, going from uh, from ownership to access, you know, that is uh, quite a, a, a transition that will be um, concluded in the next five years as well for music, for radio, for television, for movies. As we can see with Netflix, you know, following sort of the pay will model, not the pay wall model of the New York Times. Uh, that clearly won't work. In some cases, it may work, but I I don't think it's really a, it's not a business model, it's an aberration, you know, a pay wall. I think uh, pay will is what we're looking for. In other words, what will people pay for voluntarily or by packaging what Kevin Kelly calls the new generatives, that's where it's going. We're going to see a convergence of telecom and media you know, together in a new ecosystem, which is also becoming a really, really important ecosystem of social networks, telecom content, advertising, and device makers. And telecoms are going to get engaged with all that stuff, all that just go away. Things are moving to the cloud. I mean, clearly we're seeing that everywhere with mobile devices and tablets. In eight years, that will be a completely foregone conclusion. Main issue there is, you know, potential loss of privacy with bleeding data. There's going to be huge business in maintaining privacy and uh, be becoming a privacy bank and still being part of uh, the grid, you know, like the uh, like uh, Minority Report or the Matrix. It's going to be quite hard, I think, for us to decide if we're going to be on the grid or not because being off the grid will be, for most people, just not possible. So now we, we have to figure out a way that we can use all that stuff and still remain private in some way or the other because everything indeed is moving to the cloud. This is a huge transition. will also take the next 10 years. Lots and lots of business models coming out of that. In general, I think quite positive for most people. Disembodiment of almost all media, starting with books, music, films, television, uh, and sooner or later are going to education, which is a trillion dollar opportunity right there. Uh, I would definitely recommend in Brazil, you know, you, you take that step towards disembodying education. Um, that seems like a very, very likely thing. As, as people in Thailand have already looked at, you know, they're already giving tablets to, um, to students. Of course, they have uh, a bunch of other problems there, which is why it's not really working as it should. I mean, we're, we're seeing all this virtual data and augmented reality and 3D. And I mean, clearly that, you know, our our mobile devices are becoming extensions of our brain. And it's it's clearly going to be our brain connected to devices through all kinds of ways. And I hope not through actual interfaces on my iris or in my head, like an implant. Um, and lots of people talking about this, but clearly external brains, that's what those devices are. And this will be, again, a standard in 2020. But the business models, I think human machine convergence, very scary stuff. Watch this movie, uh, Frank and Robot. I haven't seen it yet, but I had good things about it. And of course, Transcendent Man by Ray Kurzweil give you something to think about there. Uh, in eight years, a lot of that stuff will become reality or has or is already becoming reality now. And, you know, but I don't want to be that guy here on the left. Uh, I think there's lots of things to consider in this convergence. You know, we're going to be like this. I 
kind of doubt this is a future you want to see. But we have to brace for those new interfaces. Internet on our iris, clearly that's already reality for a fighter pilot. Speak into your television, motion control, voice control, face recognition, automatic language translation. Lots and lots of really great things here that technology will bring to us, especially as content creators. Uh, a slight drawback, as you can see here, you know, we might get addicted to this because, and you know, of course, we are addicted in many ways to our external brains because it's so good. And it won't have as many side effects as this kind of habit will. Uh, social media, you know, in Brazil, I think 90% of people are in social media. Uh, so technology addiction is a growing concern, something that I think we need to also be able to have time to detox. And, you know, offline is a new luxury, and that will emerge in Brazil in the next few years as well. Data is a new oil. We'll talk about this a lot, but it's not uh, going to be a major subject here. But clearly in the economy of uh, things, we're moving away from oil being the central wheel and the pumping and the mining and the, the refurbishing and the driving with data is going to be much more, much bigger economy, as you can see with the likes of Google, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Tencent, QQ, Orchid, you know, whatever you have. Data is the new oil, and we're going to be able to get to it in these kind of interfaces, just diving in, pulling out stuff, uh, and, and becoming familiar with, with, with what goes on and making sense out of it in a much, much different way. By 2020, this becomes normal to dive into data like... Um, uh, like we've seen in the movie here, you know, and of course what, what is happening now with augmented reality is only a precursor to all of these things. Uh, largely, I think a lot of these things are subject to cultural evaluation and, and to habit changes, you know, are we actually going to do this or are we just toying with this, you know, clearly it's all about trust, whether we trust our suppliers, our devices, our, the strangers that we know on our network, I mean, trust is becoming the key issue in most of these things, and we're, we're certainly heading into a trust economy in 2020. You won't do business with anyone that you don't completely trust because uh, they'll get your data, not just your money, and your attention, and you're going to go in this direction. Money is completely changing the future of money. Here's a great chart I found um, uh, by, from emergence.cc about what's happening with money, crowdfunding, microfinance. Money is completely changing. In the next five years, you know, the storage of value, how we pay, whether we pay with attention, we pay with reputation. There's new currencies, social capital. This is going to be humongous. Great book. You have to read uh, Collaborative Consumption from Rachel Boltzmann. Uh, and a great a bunch of great TED videos from her. She's talking about a reputation becoming a currency. That is clearly the case, and this will be a much more powerful than our credit card uh, in 10 years, and uh, that is uh, a trend that we're clearly going to see there. Uh, cars, transportation is going to totally change. There will be an ecosystem of, you know, I keep saying that word, but that's basically what we're, I mean, you know, it's, it's reiterative, but that's, that's where we're going. You know, we're going to see an, an ecosystem of electric cars, uh, of of shared cars, of of not using cars and using flying tubes, maybe, but you know it's not going to be about cars; it's going to be about transportation, and all of the car companies are heading in this direction. I think this is going to be a very interesting future. Uh, that uh, in terms of keeping human, you know, that is going to teach us quite a few lessons there. Climate change remains the number one issue. Uh, in America, we have climate science, which is appalling. Uh, election is going to be very soon. Maybe you'll see this before the election. In America, I hope that uh, Obama wins, of course, even though he's also silent on the climate change. Maybe that will change after he can take the duct tape out of, uh, of his mouth. Uh, global warming is the biggest market failure in the history of capitalism, and this clearly proves to us that capitalism in this way, as we've had it, does not solve these problems. We need to think of another way uh, as to what the circular economy calls a circular way of doing this, inspired by nature and needed to safeguard our planet. If you're looking at the technical circle, the biological circle, this is clearly where we're heading, and, and there's a, a bunch of really interesting business models there, and I think a lot of that stuff could be invented or has already been invented in Brazil. There's lots of green energy stuff in Brazil. Maybe Brazil could take the leadership from Germany here in this regard in the next few years. Read this book, The Third Industrial Revolution by Jeremy Rifkin. I think the energy revolution will follow the communication revolution. That is clearly, I'm in line with Jeremy on this or, or vice versa. But he's talking about the internet uh, being a model for what he calls the intergrid, right? A future in which millions of people can collect, produce and store and also share energy in their homes and put it back into the grid. This, I believe, is, is a, a solution where the hydrogen will be that universal storage medium. I'm not sure, but once again, I think that third industrial revolution is, is uh, Jeremy is working on this a lot here in Europe. That really needs to come to Brazil. Um, so invite him. I'll, I'll come over and, and talk about it as well. We're heading in this direction. 
at the business model is going to be a collaborative model with a new energy ecosystem, a new media ecosystem, a new money ecosystem, and a new education ecosystem built around the collaborative effort, you know, keeping a, a common goal in the middle. And the common goal is to survive and prosper in the future, not to blow us up by keeping on our old ego systems. Uh, the future of business is going to be the decline of these empires pretty much across the board with the exception of maybe Apple for five years or something. Uh, as you can see, I'm an, I'm a, you know, I'm an, I'm an Apple fanboy here. But uh, it's, a, it's going to be a decline of empires and a rise of networks. And this is really the, the thing I hate about Apple is that it's really an empire. Um, but we'll see. The rise of networks, I think that clearly isn't just going to be Facebook, but uh, not just social networks, but clearly a connected society, a network society. We're in the midst of this huge shift, uh, you know, going from this idea of having a central place, a tower, a monopolies and top down to the interconnected economy. Uh, and that is a shift that's already well in place now. In three years, that will be completely next to each other, completely converged uh, society, you know, when we have five billion people connected to the internet. And of course, We'll want both, we'll want solitude and being by ourselves and we'll want to be connected to the cloud and we'll have to learn how to be responsible with this and actually make it work and not kill ourselves in the process. Uh, because, you know, technology's humanization will be crucial. To me, that is absolutely number one because, you know, that there's already way enough things like cloud and peer index that want to turn us into algorithms, which we're just plainly not. So uh, here's a summary of a few things. You know, it's about four sides. It's about data social, local, mobile, cloud, crowdsourcing, open systems, all that stuff will be next five years basically being a given. Uh, and I do hope that the Oktoberfest will still be here in 2020 because it's a great place to go to. I don't live in Munich, but it's a fun event. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, thanks for your time. Thanks for dropping by. You can download my app. Uh, just Google for Futurist app and you'll find it or visit me at uh, mediafuturist.com for my media stuff. Scan the code here for my app if you like. Visit me on SlideShare and do whatever else you like. And thanks very much for listening. Bye.